Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 254, March 23rd. Today's a big day. I'll talk about why. This meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, and those that are, welcome. Uh, Zach and Verzak. Hey, that's kind of cool. Anyway, have been joining us in chat, uh, talking about how much they've been enjoying Wix 4 and the improvements over Wix 3. Let's go talk about what we're talking about today. We will be talking about the Wix 4 release plan, and then we will do the issue review and triage, and we will then take anybody's questions and comments. We've already been getting some comments that have been positive, which is kind of nice. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, let's 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 look at the release plan. Nothing's changed. Uh, it is what we are doing is the March four Wix uh, four RC four did come out on Friday. Yay. Uh, we're going to talk about the issues that we've had because there's been a few that have been opened and that's probably the reason I'm a little less confident about everything right now, but that's what we're going to talk about. Um, right now, I think that everything says that we are going to be releasing in a week and a half. That is a Wednesday. So I remember like two weeks from yesterday is kind of the thing we're looking at. Um, so yeah, that that's the current plan. Let's go talk about triage because that's actually where we're going to have the discussion about really where we're at. But right now we are saying that we are releasing in two weeks from yesterday. Two weeks from yesterday, not a lot of time. I, I, it feels a little surreal, I'm gonna be honest with you, that we're finally at this point, having worked on this for so long. But let's go talk about the issues. Bob, you ready? We're not there yet. Bob? <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're gonna start with the oldest issues and work our way uh, down from there. This first one we dismissed last time to get more information and some people are gave us more information. Yep, he provided more information and then Bob reopened it. So in the end, this just sounds like an interesting feature, Bob, that we could do if someone wanted to do it. Yeah, uh, I think so. I, I wouldn't want to put this in the engine, um, but I think, yeah. It's worth looking at. I wouldn't. My own thing. I I, I would like to keep Burn Svelte, so I, I you know don't know exactly how much it would uh, you know incur in, in size costs to use the WinGet API. Oh yeah. Um, right. But it's 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 worth looking. Uh, all right. At. I would, it it I would needs put a this up for grabs. Yeah. It and, needs a yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's Usually the things that I stick on this, the hardest part of this is uh, the security around, make sure that everything comes down Absolutely. and you know what you're getting. Yep. That's the hard part almost always. All right. Uh, so that could go up for grabs and someone that's yep. interested in working that feature could go ahead and do so. Um, Wix for net seven harvest missing XE project. So someone's trying to use Harvest Project, pulling these things in and is getting some of the files. And for whatever reason, the output group is not pulling the XE, I think is the issue. Yeah. And that's going to be probably the choice of .NET to not include it in the binaries output group. I'm trying to find that's that. That's my guess. Yeah. So this, I don't think is, our bug. It's kind of like, yeah, that's the way it goes. And honestly, with .NET apps, you need to publish them for them to work, unfortunately, which makes Harvest Project not terribly useful given the way that project you have to publish a project to make it all work. So I don't think their expectation is going to work out for them given uh, projects. Hey, that's what Zach just said. Probably just have to publish to get everything to work out right. So would you, could there be additional output groups that are populated after a publish? Mm, no, not, well, they're not output groups at that point. I mean, we, we could fake it, but like right now, all this is supposed to live in the C sharp project. So like, yeah, they could do that. Right? C sharp could do that. That would be cool if they did. So should have said, Hey, give us the, the published output group that they would run the right. published target and then give us that output group. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, that does not exist. Um, there's a publish output group. I don't know that there is, Zach. If there was, that would be awesome. Maybe that Well, I agree. Would... It should definitely be part of, you know, C sharp rather than yes. Wix. But yeah. yeah. There is one. Whoa, I miss I have to go look at that. I'm gonna have to go look at it. All right. Well then that's the answer. Go use publish output group. Awesome. 
I need to go dig into that because I missed the publish output group then. I was not looking in the right place. So that's great. That's exactly what you want here. Um, so anyway, that's harvesting is doing what it's doing. It's just .NET 7, .NET 6, .NET Core projects in general are a little bit different because you really need to publish them instead of um, just building them. So I, I think that's, I don't know what that is, external, or I think it's right. What he's getting is correct right now. He or she is getting is correct right now. Publish items output group. I'm going to go look that up. Thank you, Zach. That's great. I am going to go look at that right after this meeting. I'm That's exciting to go look at. All right, cool. So I don't think this is a bug. I think it's that's the correct behavior for what they're doing there. And Zach has suggested using the publish items output group instead. Okay, next one is uh, bundle projects don't handle things. So I, I've been leaving all the issues in at this point in time open, even though I have fixed some of them. Uh, bundle projects don't handle projects with spaces. I don't think that's the issue here. Let me remind myself. Um, oh, yeah, all right. So this issue is that if they have spaces in their project names that the the auto generation of properties and bind names was not working correctly in V3. It did not work. It just, it would create property names with spaces, which of course you could then refer to them, which is useful, useless. And in Wix 4, we now uh, replace those spaces with underscores. Actually, any invalid character gets replaced with um, underscores so that you can then refer to them. Yay. And so this is. I, in the end, I just updated the documentation to make it clear uh, that new behavior in four. So that was a doc bug in the end, and I did that. So I think we can unmark this triage, but I left it here so that we would talk about it in case there's anything anybody else wanted to talk about these things. Okay, pause, no, all right. That was straightforward. Um, Prereq license won't compile despite package rep actually being set. Sean, you know all about this one. Yeah, it was a really simple bug where if you had the order wrong, then it wouldn't compile. So... Wrong, quote unquote. <laughs> I mean, really simple fix, really annoying bug to run into, so. Yeah, that's what we're getting. All of them are really annoying at this point. So, I think we, we had a chat. Let me pull up the PR here, right? We were having a little thing like, all right, so we need to find the bar that we're going to take for bugs that go in now and aren't going to get any real user validation, um, additional user validation at this point. Um, and so that's, just, that's what we have to talk about. And, and we need to do so because we're going to get more of these bugs. In fact, we have another one here in the merge modules failing to build when there's spaces in the paths. There, what do we want to do here? I think we take them. I, I, it feels like we should, especially if we can create the tests that validate them, that we're confident that the unit test will cover this, even though people won't validate it until the final Wix 4 build and RTM, unless they go and grab a dev build where the fix is, and most people aren't doing that. Some that... are trivial, like like the this one, seven two eight seven. Yep. It, you know, it. completely unit testable, hundred percent. Yep. Others are also unit testable or integration testable, and yeah, you know, I a hundred percent would push up the um. Sorry, I'm losing a metaphor. Uh, it, at this point. Or really, in the past, you know, couple months, we should be pushing up, you know, what we require for for changes in terms of tests. So, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, maybe space in a path was something that we would, you know, validate manually and be happy. Now, yeah, we should have a test. I think that is the case. So if we, so you're saying that you feel pretty good if we have a test that's validating it, and that we probably can take it because we wrote a test for a case that 
was missing a test. I guess especially if it was missing a test in the past. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. And and other things too. It's like at this point, it'd be good to get at least one other set of eyes on changes and yeah, all your normal stuff. Uh, so a required reviewer on the PRs at this point? I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if their one line changes and they have a test for it. <laughs> then how much better is it going to get, right? Yeah, so yeah. just... How just, much user validation is required? Right, right. A little background, like there, uh, when, when I grew up as a software engineer, right, there is this ever-present fear, sorry, and this was Office, right? So, you know, the pressure always there was you realize this is a multi-billion dollar software project that we're going to be pushing out the door. And granted, release times were ginormous and there wasn't a huge unit testing infra, uh, culture yet. So there's a lot of differences back then that I'm trying to let, I've always been trying to let go <laughs> as I've been moving around. But it's like kind of where I grew up and there's always the the story that someone had in the lab that was like, well, you know, the Cosmic Ray got us one time and there's a compiler bug that when we rebuilt the software, it introduced this thing that caused all these problems and you can't send that out to millions of people with the thing. All right, so whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so it was always the fear of even, you know, doing anything was a bad. So just like, okay, that's from before. Now, I think what Bob has said is that if you have a test for it, we can validate it. And I'm adding the denim, especially if there wasn't a test before, so it was obvious we didn't check it, then probably we can just take it knowing that, yeah, the test is validating it. Everything is good. Plus, we can ship after our TM. And I'm trying to do everything. In my <laughs> trying to get comfortable with the, yes, we will have, probably have to do a 401 after 4 goes out because we'll have people that jump on and find something bad that we need to fix. So... The answer now is take this, probably should have someone always review it, just, just to double check to make sure the test is you know there, whatever. Just a little bit extra work here in these last couple of weeks, um, but we'll take the fixes as they come in with the um, with tests to go along with them. Sounds good? Sound yep. like the right plan? Yeah. So on that front, this definitely can go, although I don't think anybody has officially said, I don't know, I haven't even been using the reviewer things. Um, I'll go and I can, if we want to make it official, I could go add the reviewer thing, say thumbs up um, on that one. All right, so that one will be good to go. Page not found docs for three bundles. Um, so this one's interesting. I saw this come in, usually I just try to fix the URLs really fast. Um, and, but I know Bob, yeah, reorganized the code, the, the, the code. It, it, it the broke a doc. bunch of URLs. Yeah. But this one is interesting in that it didn't even exist for like, I don't know, three days. It was, five, yeah. It's like three <laughs> days and there's already, you know, Google, and Google you know, already found engine it. Engine juice. Yeah. Right. But I'm, I, but not enough that it's really out there. So if we wait another day, probably Google's already lost it in the, or found it in the new place in the index. Do we need to create a redirect for this? Normally, I'd say we need to create a redirect for it, but I don't think we do since it was so short-lived. Um, yeah, I also left it open um, and didn't fix it um, because it's worth discussing. A uh, bigger issue is, are there other URLs, not just the V4 URLs, that we're not redirecting and should be? You know, in other words, what, what, are, what do our 404 logs look like? Um, and I, I used to, I was kind of obsessive on my blog. I'm like, Oh, someone points to a bad page. I'm like, I should, I should look at that. And well, no, I, that was never URL. So I will ignore that 404. Um, given the, the reorg is kind of in this weird state where, you know, we haven't shipped four yet. I'm hoping that the new organization will you know, allow more organic growth without needing to reorg again. I don't know if it makes sense to, you know, do little one-off redirects or if we should, you know, I don't know, create a 404 project to fix some of these things. So I, I think if you think we're, if you're worried about us missing lots of pages, then, then that 
sounds like a reasonable thing to do. I think in this issue, we could just close this one without a redirect since it was so short lived. But it's this yeah. is the exception. This is a very unusual case that something moved I, yeah. within such a small space. I agree. I agree. Uh, again, I just kept it open for this. Yeah, discussion. Fair enough. Um, yeah, there's we probably, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of said, all right, we have a 404 page. At least people can now tell us when they hit one and hopefully tell us where they came from. Um, right. I haven't done the work to try to get into the refer logs and all that for it. Um, given the way that the new doc site takes it, it, it takes all uh, files. So it, um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we, all right. So if, if you think we need to do a 404 cleanup, then we can definitely or a 404 tracking project, we could definitely add that um, separate from everything else. Okay. I, I'm, I don't think it's, you know, high value at the moment. Um, and I'm willing to, you know, let some of those uh, resolve themselves naturally from search engines as they find the new pages. Yeah. So I, this, I think we should do this. I'm fine if, you know, it's post RTM kind of thing. All right. All right. So I think we can send this one on its way, knowing that hopefully search engines I don't even find the or find the new location already. Okay. All right. Merge modules, build from MS build. Anyway, the, the end result, the issue here is that if there are spaces in the merge module path where things are being extracted to, you hit a problem. Um, thank you very much for providing the repro that did narrow down very rapidly what was going wrong. Um, and I have a fix for this uh, that I definitely want other people to review. And I did it last night late just to make sure that it was no more complex than I thought it was. But I think I may want to add another. I want to look at the test to make sure I'm getting enough test coverage on it. Um, but that is that. And I wanted also to have it here so that we could talk about this uh, this escaping trail backslash when passing ours to Wix native um, to go along with the other bug that we talked about earlier way before I knew what our um, our thoughts were. So in the end, I dismiss. There's the fix and then there is the change. Path of spaces is the change necessary to expose the problem. Um, so I think this ends up in the similar bucket as the other one. Okay, it's someone else to review it, make sure it looks good, and then make sure there's enough test coverage, and then we'll go with it, correct? Yeah. All right, that one is disappointing. It makes me want to go through and honestly change this code here where we get a temp folder in our test to always add a space <laughs> to all tests. It's just like, it always yeah. gives back a test folder that has a space in it. I like that. I like that. We already have a centralized place to get past. We can have spaces or or Unicode yeah. or, yeah. It was late last night, so I didn't do that because I just wanted to make sure I got the fix right. But that might be something I add. Just go, all right, let's put this in here and see if anything else blows up. All right, um, we're getting a rash of these now of the modern MS build, it is clear that not a lot of people have dealt with the modern MS build, the new SDK style projects and CS projects, things like that. There's still a lot of people working with the older way of doing MS build. This is another one of the examples of those where someone was using the post build events and post build events are, I think, generally frowned upon in the C sharp projects now, given the way you have to do them. I mean, I think they're still supported for backs compatibility, but using them requires using the explicit imports of SDKs. Anyway, all of this is detailed knowledge that if you're not familiar with SDK style projects, you're going to have to get familiar with it to work inside Wix projects because we've adopted that. Um, and I only have this conversation or I've discussed this because it's surprised me the number of people that aren't familiar with it or that blame us because we're the first ones they've ever interacted with these things. Like, well, clearly your targets are missing. I'm like, no, the targets come. Oh, they're not used to these SDK style things. So, um, which is fine. I guess, you know, it's like, eh, that's what we get for living on the cutting edge of the build 
for so long that I have to remember a lot of people are just continuing to maintain their CS projects with no problem without the new style stuff. So we're getting a lot of these right now. But in I'm the not end, sure we're on the cutting edge. Best DK has well, been around for a long time. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's it's yeah, cutting. I mean, well, there's nothing ahead of SDK style, so at least we're we've caught up. Um, uh, so anyway, it yeah. I just wanted to bring this up: is that this is a bug that has occurred. We're starting to see it pop up all over the place. I'm just trying to gird myself that we're going to get more of these. As people have to learn, oh, I need to go learn a new thing about MS Build that I've never had to worry about before. Yes. Well, I mean, the the interesting thing is that it's mostly hidden from you. I mean, yeah. even if you're even if you're targeting .NET Framework, you can get an SDK style pro. You will get an SDK style project out of Visual Studio. Uh, not necessarily. You can still create old style SDK old style projects in, in Visual Studio. You can, but yeah. the most direct route does not do so. Uh, well, if you target .NET Framework, I think you get the old style projects. Okay. Mm Last time I checked, that wasn't the case. But okay. well, um, I was back a couple dots on Visual Studio here. Okay. Sure. Okay. It was surprising. Well, I was then, like, "Oh, I'm getting a gigantic huge project still." I'm like, "I thought they would have moved all these by now." But yeah, maybe they have the same problem. <laughs> all these people expect it the old way, right? And right. Don't want to go through the experience of huh. teaching everybody the new okay. one. I have to look. I know I've seen it somewhere. So I generalized. That was a mistake. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, it's a thing. We're going to be dealing with this a lot. Any of you that want to help us. Um, get, yeah, you only get an SDK if you create a project targeting core. That's Zach is has the same memory that I do for it. It's, um, All right. And if you create a Wix 4 project, you will get an SDK style project. And yes, there are differences in SDK style projects. And if they are unfamiliar to you, I highly recommend going and reading the MS build documentation about them because they have lots of nice features and you will understand better how we've made the whole system hold together. It will not be magic. And when you try to do things the old way, you at least have an idea that there might be newer ways to do it. I'm not sure if they're better, but if you want to keep doing it the old way, you'll know that you have to do some not as pretty MS build things to have it show up, like doing explicit SDK imports, which I do not like, and I never remember the syntax for, so I try to avoid them. Um, oh, and by the way, Heatwave will, if you convert your V3 project, uh, maybe link to escape. That's, that's actually not a bad, maybe we go create a link somewhere. To, yeah, it's like, I don't definitely don't want to recreate the SDK style projects. Zach brings up the idea of linking to SDK style docs. Maybe there's a place we could put that, although nobody's going to find it. Um, anyway, the last thing I would say is Heatwave will convert if it finds that you're using post build, it will do the right thing and convert your projects uh, with the appropriate SDK style, whatever necessary SDK style imports, explicit imports or implicit imports or whatever. It'll do the right thing to try to give you the minimal project. So if you convert. It just does it for you. Maybe that's bad that people are like, ah, it just works. So they create their new project next time and then it doesn't work and they didn't realize the work Heatwave did for them. I don't know. Um, it's definitely that. So uh, learn SDK style projects if you're going to be modifying the Wix project. I guess that's the long story that doesn't matter at all. All right. Next one, Wix for RC Heatwave project. So this should go over to the Heatwave people, which is me in a different place. Um, but does not have a patch option. And that is correct. Patch is not officially supported in Wix projects at the moment. As this person points out, it can kind of work, but we've not got any tests or any validation that it's going to work. So this is, I think, I, I, I don't know if we mark this external and send it over the fire giant side for them to say, correct, patches aren't supported. But we could also say that patches aren't officially supported in Wix for patch projects. Sorry, let me be very explicit. Packs, pa uh, creating a patch from a Wix proj is not currently supported. Like it might work. It might work in some limited scenarios. It might not work in some more extended scenarios. It is not yet supported. Um, but the burn end to end tests do have those projects. Yes, I'm you. I I know you can do it, but I don't. No, there's know nothing that special it's... about them. 
thanks to the work you did in V4. Right. But I don't it's now just another invocation of the normal build. Yeah, I just don't know that it really works yet. Like I there's no I was other test besides back that you said there was no tests. So oh, okay. Well, there are tests. <laughs> there are tests that use it, but there's no test for the patch project itself. Right. That go this is validating the actual patch behaviors. So that's what's missing. Is actually validating the patch project's work. So uh some tests use this option. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. So I guess it's it's the beginnings. You could try, what do we call it? It's experimental. It's like, yeah, it works in some cases, but we haven't validated all the way everywhere. Yeah. I think that's the answer. Heat, should, heat wave should not block it, I would say. Uh, Maybe it doesn't let you, true. you know, there are no project templates for it. But There's definitely no project templates. And and this little drop down, I don't know what this little drop down is going to do. You'd have to go try it in heat wave. <laughs> like, what does this drop down show if you make it a patch project inside heat wave? Um, I don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> uh, it's because it's not, uh, we haven't finished the support for it to know that it works everywhere. So anyway, that's the answer to this one is that, yeah, we don't quite have patch projects to it. It's interesting that someone wants to do that as well. I, I haven't seen that. I don't know if they're just doing completions or I actually want to try to build a patch from a wish project. It makes well, sense. I, I pointed this person to the burn tests for the manage custom action. Uh, and I think they just started poking around. Yep. 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 Maybe we should add a thing that's that says like experimental on this or so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, the answer is yeah, we, we have not completed the validation that this will work. A lot of it comes down to, for example, like I don't think that the the back end, the back, the the very end of the build that does the whole copying, uh, uh, laying out the bin folder and all that. I don't know that that understands MSPs at all, and I don't trust that it does. So, like, there's a lot of work left to be done there for it to work correctly. In all scenarios. So anyway, that's not a bug. That is, uh, I guess that could. That's a feature request is to support and patches for Wix projects. And then, well, no. and Wix and Heatwave, yeah. Because we're not there yet in Wix. I, I don't want people thinking, oh, I can create a patch Wix project. Well, you can try, but we have not verified that it's worked yet. The, the lack of a template is, you know, fair warning. Yeah, it's definitely a hint. So, all right. So for the, for the yep. 404, when I search for something in that page, Google is still showing me the old path. So do you have a way of poking Google and making it re-index? No. Um, yeah, you can you can request it with their their webmaster tools, but surprisingly it it does take some time. Yeah. So like I, I search for removal of display internal UI in quotes, mm -hmm. and the only result I get is the old path. Yeah. Yeah. They just, well, they maybe haven't... just add a redirect if you want. You can add a redirect from the old one to the new one. That'll work. The, or even, uh, yeah, uh, that would work. So like, yeah, it's in here. I'm surprised it's taking Google that long after. But how, when did the... Did the changes go yesterday or is it two days ago? Uh, at least two days ago. It, okay. it was this week. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I I pushed it on Saturday. Yeah. Good grief. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> like... I saw it and I'm like, oh, Sean, I'm going to, <laughs> going yeah. to rearrange your stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, if you want to add a redirect, that's fine. It won't hurt anything. Um, and... I mean, there's so many already. It's like, what's one more? Um, hopefully, eventually, it will go away. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll take it and add a redirect. All right, because I'm also apparently adding something about MS Build SDKs. I just, I th yeah, I think just, I don't know, maybe. Um, I don't know. Some. Uh, it's I don't fine. Know. If you keep talking, I'll do it during the meeting. It's yeah. yeah. People, I don't, I 
don't have a lot of hope that people are going to find a doc page that says, hey, you need to know about MS Build SDK stuff. But, but maybe it'll help some people be like, oh, this is new. Oh, this is cool. I should use this well, everywhere. The title is MS Build. So. Oh, all right. Well, there's hope then. Um, if you call people maybe, read documentation. Maybe it'll, yeah, if we put it, do people read the big yellow box, whatever, colorful boxes more or less? I don't know. It's like, that's one of the things. <laughs> it says tip. I'm going to skip it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't. Is it, is it like it's not in the text? I don't know what they do. Or they see that first. Whatever. All right. So staring at this, um, one, two, no, yes. Wait. No, no, no. Oh, okay. This is refreshed. All right. So that's not a bug. That goes does go away. That's if someone wants to redirect, that's fine. Um, so one, one, two issues found in the last little bit that have been in there since the beginning and we're missing tests. So we have now added tests. We will get the fixes in. Does that change our attitude about Wix for RTM? And I'm gonna ask this every time we take a set of fixes or do anything. I'm gonna ask that question. I, and I'm gonna hope the answer is still no. Like, I haven't seen any bug or fix so far that would make me reset. All right. Yeah, all right. and they're all one-liners anyway. Yeah, almost one-liners, yeah. Mine's three, but yeah. I'm fine as long as the ratio of, of code fix to new test is like 20 to 1. Sure, sure. All right, so I guess that was a question. Other things people want to talk about, discuss, things like that. While you're thinking about that in chat and starting to type in your question and all the things going about. My question is, should we have a meeting next Thursday or next Friday or the following Tuesday, you know, whatever, before releasing RTM to do any final pass of are we fixing these bugs or not? More bugs will come up before we do triage. I expect that we will do like we did here, which is fix them, make sure there are unit tests for them and then add a reviewer just to make sure that someone else looks at it before we commit the change. So we can do that process um, as we're going through making things go. Do we all want to get together sometime between now and RTM to reconvene, reevaluate? Any thoughts? Bob, Sean? I, I don't think... I think we should continue to do what we did, which was to propose fixes and talk about them. Uh, we don't want to postpone discussion of an issue for a meeting. Ah, uh, okay. All right. All right. I unless I, you're proposing daily meetings, which no. I hope you're not. No. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't think we. Yeah. I I think we can do you know everything async. Do we want to have another? check-in meeting before the end, not daily, but like literally uh, one more before the end of days. Or we're like, yeah, you know what? This is it. The next time I see you, which would be March 6th, would be the day after Wix 4 goes out. April. April, April, April 6th. Sorry, I said March. My bad. April I'm 6th. Okay with, I could do a meeting on April 4th instead of April 6th if you want. Mm -hmm. We could move to Tuesday. That really will mess with people. Um, Tuesdays instead of Thursdays or not. Didn't we do them might. on Tuesdays at one point? I'm sure we did on Tuesdays at one point. Yeah. Um, but not for a yeah, long time. Yeah. Well, hey, we're mysterious. <laughs> uh, I, I like that idea. It's just, it's the, you know, I don't know, final go, no go. Right. And honestly, a little party, I guess. I don't know, like a little bit, yay. <laughs> no, that won't happen until it's out and we don't get any bugs for at least three months. <laughs> no. Well, that's uh, not gonna happen. <laughs> I know, I know. A guy can dream. All right, I've filled a lot of space. I, I'm i hearing a consensus that we take the first meeting of April, which would normally be on the 6th, and instead have that meeting on the 4th, review the world, uh, look at it, and then uh, make the final nod on Wix for RTM, GA, whatever, final release um, the following day. Okay, 
let's go ahead and pencil that in. I will update the YouTube schedule and I will put in the meeting out there and all that good stuff for people to think about attending Tuesday, 9.30 Pacific Daylight Time, less than two weeks from now. All right, that's the plan. Otherwise, we will continue to keep track of issues, resolve them as they come in. Hopefully no more fixes because we've got them all. Again, I know I'm dreaming, but, um, I th and get prepared for pushing everything out on April 5th this year. Anything else people have out there stuff going on? No, if not, I think we're good. I think that's all we have going on. And we'll be back in 12 days, I guess that would be not 14, 12. A dozen of days, we'll be back in a dozen of days. It's close, things are looking pretty good. The fixes are really small. And there are in cases that we just missed. So that's generally good, I think. Uh, we've had good coverage. People have been picking up Wix 4. Pick up Wix 4, RC4. If you haven't already, use it. Try it out. Even if you don't commit your changes to your organization, convert all your code, do a build, make sure things are generally working. Uh, although, honestly, <laughs> it's getting a little late. But that's all right. We'll deal with that. So I think I filled enough space. We'll be back in 12 days. Not two weeks. 12 days. April 4th. And we will hopefully be just ready to celebrate the final release of Wix 4 to RTM. All right. Until then, we're all going to stay vigilant. Uh, I recommend you do go out there and use Wix. And uh, we'll see you in 12 days. Bye. Bye. Bye.